during that period, uh, after the 2006 takeover uh, onwards, did you feel like, you know, it's too much? Uh, and just throw in the towel and maybe just head off to a, another country? Never. Yeah. That, that never crossed my mind. Yeah. That never. Like I said, mm. it only made me more determined. I actually had resigned to the fact that if uh, this government would continue, that I would one day end up in jail again mm -hmm. for a longer stint. Mm -hmm. And I was prepared for that. Right. Yeah, you know, uh, mentally I was prepared for that. But uh, giving up was never the issue. That, yeah. that never crossed my mind at all. Yes. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, even today, I still remain as determined as I was when when I started off. Right. Uh, I think one needs to understand that uh, this is something that I believe in. Yes. Uh, it's it's a commitment that I've made, mm -hmm. and I intend to uh, respect that commitment. Yes, uh, you know, there was there was a time when the authorities actually entered your home with your family in it. You know, uh, you know, people probably can't even imagine what that must have felt like uh, to have your space, your private space, being intruded on. Uh, can you just explain what happened? Yeah, there are two occasions when right. when they came and sort of raided my place to you know uh, to say that they were looking for something that I had no idea about. Right. Of course, they found nothing. Yes. Uh, but uh, again, I believe that was simply an intimidation uh, exercise, uh, right. and of course, it it became very difficult for my family. Uh, right. You know, particularly my children, my wife. Mm. And, um, yeah, and uh, uh, unfortunately, they're not as strong as I am yes. when it comes to this kind of things. But uh, that's something that I've had to manage and my family had to put up with. Right. And, uh, yeah, it's been very difficult, right. very difficult. And I constantly got told by my wife to, you know, be careful, you know, not yes. to do this, not to speak, not to... But I had a job to do. The, the government actually tried to even, you know, uh, stop uh, unions from uh, speaking out publicly on, on issues that mattered to workers. Huh? Right. I mean, how could a trade union worth its salt yes. keep quiet when 2,000 of its members were summarily being terminated? Yes. Uh, without cause. Mm. Without cause. And with the blessings of the previous government. Right. right? We, had, we as a trade union movement had a job to do. I, it was my duty to speak up for those workers, right? right? And, and that's what uh, unions are for. And of course, I, I was imprisoned, I was uh, <coughs> charged mm -hmm. uh, for causing anxiety, you know, but uh, the ironic uh, thing here is that, uh, what about the anxiety that the 2,000 families uh, faced uh, with the termination? Right. Yeah, uh, no one cared about that, mm -hmm. but uh, only because the government had to uh, take charge and, 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 and shut me up. Uh, that is why I was charged. And I've been in and out of court for four years almost. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, I was imprisoned again for another night. Uh, was picked up from my home at uh, 10, 11 p.m. at night in front yes. of my family. Uh, locked up in Lotoka, then driven to Suva at 3 a.m. in the morning, locked up here, right. presented in court. Uh, I've, I've been through all that and, and, and all that finally came to an end just uh, last month, was it? Yes. Yeah, when, when the court acquitted me right. uh, uh, of any, any wrongdoing and, and uh, it took some four years before that happened. Now right. I've been through all this, Yes. you know, what kind of justice is this? Right. Yeah. Uh, my family's been through this, right. and uh, all of a sudden, okay, there's nothing there, sorry we charged you, kind of thing. Right. I mean, this is not how it should work, and uh, I think the previous government needs to take responsibility for that yes. action.